Hi Lucy, this is a document on uh, Chapter 8, Africa and Islam. Uh, the document is attached to our Google group folder and um, it's just an outline of, uh, of um, my notes. But basically um, what I told the class was uh, the reason Islam was important to developments in Africa is in Africa there were many stateless societies. Um, meaning that they didn't really have a written language or some kind of organized government to unify people. There, there really weren't empires, but more, um, as you can see here, uh, one example uh, that's a positive would be the matrilineal lineage and um, all these small tribal societies where family was really important. But the negatives is that they never, they never constructed anything um, or connected to each other except for um, some basic trade. So um, in Africa, we have some commonalities. Religion before Islam was primarily animistic, with the exception of um, developments in Egypt and Christianity in Ethiopia. Uh, the biggest linguistic group is Bantu, but when we look at Sundiata and the Lion King and uh, Mansa Musa, we'll find that there are some other linguistic groups that were really strong in Nigeria. And um, Oh, let's see. I wanted to show you um, something, but I guess I don't know how to get there yet. Okay, so um, we sort of uh, talked about how Islam um, spread through East North Africa and Tunisia um, and moved with um, two, two important groups um, that were um, very militant and warrior like Al Moravid and Al Mohadis. According to the website for the uh, exam, you don't need to know a lot about these two groups. You just need to know that they they swept through North Africa and brought Islam all the way into Spain. Um, I may mostly associate the movement of Islam with the Berbers and the people of Tunisia. Okay, West Africa. Um, we sort of uh, your book goes into great detail about the Sudanic states. Now here's where um, usually students become a little confused. So I downloaded this PowerPoint that I found online. Um, this is Mali. Mali today, though, is obviously not located in the same spot. And here is an image of where Ghana as an empire existed. Ghana was built on the salt versus gold trade. Um, and basically, this was a grassland before the Sahara was as big as it is today. And you've got the Niger River. Um, and you had uh, people swapping gold for salt. The salt came in big slabs. Um, we'll see that in another video. And um, I, um, what did I want to say? Oh, shoot. Okay, so um, when Islam comes here, it gives uh, the um, empires, of, especially the Mali Empire, some kind of organization built around kinship with the idea that um, military was important, but it wasn't the only thing. Education was really important too, and taking the skill sets that people had and the different uh, hierarchies of skill sets and giving them um, some established authority and responsibility. So um, Mali... Uh, the Mali kings realize that this is good for them and so they embrace Islam. So this is a big, big part of Islam. Now what's really interesting is over here is where Sudan is today. Um, many peoples and tribes in Africa, and I am generalizing, um, were nomadic and were on the move um, and they did follow herds. So this area was at one time known as the Sudanic states. During uh, later centuries uh, migrations people will move to get away from warfare and uh, slavery. They will move to this area of East Africa and they will call it the Sudan. So it's named for them, the people of the Sudanic states. But um, Sudan today is not where the Sudanic states once were. So this is also referred to as the Sahil or the grasslands. Okay. Um, so we looked at that, but um, what's also important to know is that Africa is so big, we really have to break down our history regionally. And um, there are some outliers, people who refuse to join uh, the Sudanic states. So in the area of Benin and Nigeria, you have groups of people who do not adhere to Islam. Um, their art is how we know that they were quite prosperous and powerful. We'll look more at the Nok people later, but here's an example of Nok art. Um, 
Also, um, we've mentioned it before, but Ethiopia was a um, Christian community. It's one of the oldest Christian communities on earth. Uh, you know, uh, it's one of the oldest continuous Christian communities. And um, where do I have it? Um, if you look in your book, there's a great picture of the 13th century church of King Lalabila, who will cut down into the rock layers um, various um, uh, churches in the shape of crosses. So, um, because they're in the mountains, they couldn't be um, they couldn't be uh, taken over by other groups, and so they remain Christian. So, um, there are some other groups. Oh my goodness, now I'm getting lost. There's some other groups too um, that remain outside. Um, so, Ghana, Mali, and Songhai will all um, adhere to Islam. Um, East Africa also will embrace Islam. They'll embrace Ara Arabic and mix it with Swahili. Uh, they will mix it with local tribes to make the language of Swahili. And here are some ports that stand out and are still important ports today. In fact, uh, along the East African coast, if you look carefully, you'll find a city called Dar al Islam, which is the, you know, the um, the the world of Islam. So, um, Nok, Yoruba, and Benin remain isolated and do not become Islamic. Ethiopia does not become Islamic. And then you have two, um, you have Central Congo, which does not um, convert, and Great Zimbabwe, which is, um, in your book, they actually have some really interesting information on Great Zimbabwe, so I checked that out. Um, we uh, went on and looked very carefully at um, some of the travels of Ibn Battuta and some actual images of um, the area of Mali that he traveled to. Um, tonight for homework you should compare Ibn Battuta to the next uh, reading in your textbook on uh, a Portuguese uh, Christian in Ethiopia. And then um, when we come back to class we'll learn the story of Sandiata and Mansa Musa. Okay, uh, have a good night. Bye.